Hi, this is Erin and welcome to Everything EFL, my little podcast about English language teaching and other teachy stuff too. Credit and honourable mentions will be given during the episode or in the show notes. Let's crack on. Hello, you gorgeous teacher. If you're a new listener, you are most welcome to my little podcast. If you are one of my gorgeous, lovely, fabulous, regular listeners, welcome back. Lovely to see you. Okay, what are we talking about today? Well, as the title suggests, it's positivity. I am a firm believer in, you know, adding and implementing positivity in any way you can in the classroom. Because for me, it's it's a form of mindfulness. It's a form of confidence building. Your students are more likely to open up to you. They're more likely to smile and relax a little bit. You know, there are so many like benefits to just these little pieces of positivity you can bring to your class and I don't think you can do it enough. Um, So what I've done is I've just got 10 very simple, no fuss, no to low prep ways of bringing a little positivity into your classroom. So without further ado and in no particular order, here we go. Number one, get students to say what they like about themselves and each other. What can they or have they learned from working with particular students in their class? So, you know, what do you like about yourself? Uh, Give your partner a compliment. Um, Have you learned something from working with this person? What have they taught you? Anything like that, you know, just I just think that that kind of boosting of the self-esteem is so important. Number two, find some positive, inspiring quotes online and get students to discuss them and apply them to a situation in their own lives. So uh, a couple of examples of this. I mean, there are a million quotes online, guys. You don't have to look very far. And obviously, this is easier with kind of intermediate level and above. But you could kind of pitch it to lower levels and, you know, just give them a little bit of help. Like you could say, you know, have a positive quote like, um, you know, small steps rather than big leaps. And, you know, what does this mean to you? And maybe give them an option of three different um, answers, you know, and they can pick the one. And then you could say, you know, how can you apply this to your life? What 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 goals do you have? Do they seem too big or overwhelming at the moment? How can we break them down into smaller steps? And that actual quote there becomes a really useful, beneficial conversation. And I just I just think it's brilliant. And I always do that. And one of my philosophies is everything is a process and you have to break everything down into smaller steps. So this lesson that you can give your students is a brilliant one. And actually, it kind of led into another conversation where um, we were talking about what, what kind of English goals do you have and what ways can you improve your English? And everybody said, I want to improve my English. But OK, but that's huge. That's a mountain. We need steps. How do you do that? So we brainstorm lots of little ideas. And again, which ones can you implement immediately? Um, do we need to break any more of those down into smaller steps? OK, so that kind of philosophy of breaking things down is so invaluable for your students because it can really actually aid them with their learning process. And it's just a brilliant philosophy to carry on um, throughout your life. You know, you can use any quotes I often use. And if anybody knows me, they know I am a massive fan of RuPaul. And one of his quotes, he has many, is if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? And again, what a lesson to learn And also thinking about, you know, when people do have low self-esteem, how does their behavior affect other people? You know, they generally lash out, they're negative. Um, So, you know, when you do find a quote, think about what it really means and what maybe you can kind of add to the conversation as well. Because, you know, sometimes students are young and they are quite sort of innocent and naive and they haven't lived. And, you know, you need to help them fully explore the concept behind that quote. Number three, praise, 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 especially if you know a student is struggling or finds it hard to speak. You know, just think about when you were at school um, and you got praise from your teacher. You know, you just it just makes you feel so good. And, you know, just never underestimate that. I just think it's so important to, to, to use that positive language all the time. And number four, teach your students to praise each other. Furnish them with phrases so they can compliment after someone gives a correct answer, you know, for a presentation. I thought that was great. Fantastic. Good job. Why not? You know, just get that positivity. Why do you have to be the one who gives out all the positivity? Number five, get to know their lives and ask them random questions. Now, um, if you listened to my episode last week, you would have heard me talking about this, you know, gathering up as much personal information as you can so that 
you know, you could ask them a question on Monday like, oh, um, hi, Mario, did you play football again at the weekend? Or Magda, how's your sister? Did she pass her driving test? And this just really shows them that you care. And it gives them a chance to use that conversational English when they reply. Sorry, guys, just taking a sip of water there. All this, uh, all this yapping gives me a dry throat. Number six, get students to show their classmates objects, possessions, photos and talk about them. Kind of like a show and tell, the Americans would call it. And this gives them a chance to share and learn from each other as well. You know, look, at the end of the day, who doesn't love talking about themselves? OK, and if you have a mix of cultures, even if um, students have kind of live, you know, it's a monolingual class. Do you have students with, you know, parents from different nationalities? Um, I think it can still work if, if it's a very kind of homogenous class. You know, they can still, you know, bring something in that, you know, something that means something to them, like a photograph or a gift or something like that. And, you know, again, they're just again, they're just learning from each other. They're, they're learning things about each other. And you need that for that kind of community, that community building in the class, which, again, is essential for you know students to build confidence. Number seven. Observe and comment, showing interest. So, for example, you know, Mary, I heard you singing Ariana Grande. What's your favourite song of hers? You could pretend you're really down with the kids. But, yeah, just observe things they say and, and make a note about it and, and ask them a question about it as well. Because, you know, at the end of the day, again, who doesn't love talking about themselves? Number eight, can your students teach you something? This taps into their interests and give them gives them a chance to speak with purpose on a topic that, you know, they probably know better than you. They're probably completely engaged with and it's relevant to them as well. And, you know, all of the things I just mentioned are absolutely essential for learning. So I actually asked my students this on Friday and um, mixed results. Um, you know, a couple of them play instruments and, and do skateboarding and stuff. But obviously they're over in Ireland. They don't have their guitar with them and stuff like that. But um, so I asked them to think about, do you have a skill or is there something you can bring? Re my last point. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Number nine, ask your students, what are you going to do this weekend to be kind to yourself or to treat yourself? Because maybe they weren't thinking about that. Maybe they just, yeah, I'll go shopping, I'll have lunch, blah, blah, blah. But okay, but what about doing something for you? Just a little bit of me time. Think about that. I think that's a really nice little thing to do um, every Friday as well. And it makes them think about it. And maybe, you know, consciously put something into their weekend where they do treat themselves. Even if it's just buying a new nail polish or whatever it is. And finally... Create time and space for students to reflect, either before or after activities or tasks. Um, you know, even just asking them how you feel. I remember um, last year I had a very shy online class and before we did our first sort of real discussion task, I asked them, how do you feel about speaking in English? And a lot of them said, it's difficult, I like it, it's difficult, I'm nervous. OK, fine. And then you can respond to that in the appropriate way. And then, you know, you could bring the other students into it as well. Do you guys have any advice? Can, can you tell this person what they think they should do to help? Again, if you can bring your students into the process, I just think that's much, much better as well. So it's not just all coming from you. So, yeah, that look, that's just 10 ways. OK, there are millions of ways to do this. And I'd love to know what your favourite ways are. Can you add any to this list? DM me and let me know or find the little soundbite on uh, my Instagram or Facebook where I'm advertising this episode and comment underneath. I would absolutely love to know. Let's make this a conversation. I'd love you to DM me anyway. Like I mentioned in my last podcast, I'm thinking of doing a webinar. It may or may not have taken place at the time of this recording, but my webinar idea is to um, help students build confidence. It's something that I'm very passionate about. So if you think you would like to participate, it's free. Um, just DM me and let me know and then give me a couple of ideas. I've, I've already got a couple of ideas from some teachers and I'm, I'm really happy about that because I can hone it a little bit. The more I know, the better. Again, just to remind you, if you follow me on Instagram, Follow me on Facebook as well. The really juicy stuff is on my Facebook page. Uh, it's called Get Away From That Course Book. So uh, search for it and request to join. I'd be happy to see you in there. And don't forget, guys, there's a link in the show notes. Um, it's a PDF freebie of basically everything I've said um, in this lesson. Um, in this lesson? <laughs> Still in teacher mode in this episode. Um, it's just a handy PDF so that everything I've said um, is on there on one page. Two pages, actually. Um, yeah, so that's it, guys. Um, 
always happy to be here for you. Always happy to hear your suggestions for future episodes as well. I mean, I've got a bunch of ideas and I'm lining up some guests as well, some really lovely guests to talk to you and, and share their knowledge as well. But of course, I am here to serve you. So is there something you would really like me to do an episode on? Send me a DM. All of my details, all of my contact details are in the show notes. So with that, I'm going to leave you to have a very happy, peaceful week. And as always, guys, share the love. Oh, P.S. <laughs> Take at least one thing from this episode. If you can't remember, rewind, listen again or download that freebie. Take one or two things from this lesson and try it in your lesson. I said I said I said lesson again, didn't I? <laughs> I'm tired. I'm going now. Goodbye. <laughs>